Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. When a draft horse is hooked to a load, it pushes that load from its shoulder through the collar around its neck. A good collar that fits is critically important to the comfort of the horse and therefore to its effectiveness as a draft animal. We wanted to learn more about how draft horse collars are made, so we spent some time at the Amish Koblenz Collar Shop in Millersburg, Ohio. The Koblenzes have been making collars since 1975 when Robert Koblenz began stuffing collars by hand three strands at a time. Today his son Marion operates the business with a talented staff producing a wide variety of horse and pony collars. The round part of the collar is the rim. This here is the, the back, yep. or the draft, and then the face. So the first thing we do is, when we take a uh, hide of leather on the table, she'll cut a rim, which is the longest piece. Okay. So she'll cut a rim now, you can see how that's done. Right. So that's a rim ready to be uh, stitched on the collar then and, and filled. Each collar has its own pattern. So this is a face pattern for a 21 inch number 350. And then the, um, there's the back for the 21 inch 350. Um, these are all, these are 24, 25 inch 350. Then the work collars are down. This is for a 24, 25 inch number 400 collar. The cost of, with the cost of leather, we're really careful with waste. You know, to try to get everything we can out of each piece. The head swing over. Just like that. So after the, the piece are put together, they come over here uh, on the rack and then she's assembling collars right now. That's a stapler, that's just putting the pieces together to stitch. Just to hold them in place. To hold them in place. The, the needle goes down and then there's a hook on the bobbin. It comes around and catches the loop to form your lock stitch. Okay. And then it pulls it back up again. Just right, right. Yep. That's one of the key elements is uh, in the old days they used to do collars with chain stitch, like feed sack. Right, okay. And that's terrible. Uh-huh. Because once it goes, it, yeah, the whole thing goes. The whole thing goes. Right. So these stitches, this is a lock stitch. So every stitch is locked in. You gotcha. break a stitch, the rest of them stay. Most of the stuff we have is powered by generator. Okay. Um, our own electricity, but this right. one, this machine here is on air. So after the the collar is stitched around, the the next step would be stitching a, the inner the inner seam. That's been done on this collar. Then we punch the holes, put the lacing in. The lacing's put in by hand. boys in the stuffing part, they help her lace sometimes. She's really fast at this here. Yeah. They don't like to lace with her because she beats them every time. Right. Yeah,
See how she puts all her tools back when she's done yeah. with them? Yep. If yep. you borrow a tool in this area, be sure and put it back. <laughs> yeah. And this here, uh, putting the rims on, is a very tricky job. There's so many layers of leather coming together. You got the, the top and the bottom plus the, the part that's inserted, and it has to be sewed in just the right depth. So that's a very, very tricky job there. Good. That looks very hard. <laughs> you make that look very easy, but that looks very hard yeah, to do. So here's the stuffing department then. This is the original stuffer that Dad had when he started up in 1975. Uh, he used to have a hook from the ceiling and he put the collars to the ceiling and he uh, put three pieces of straw on the top here, like that. Then he grabbed his collar. So this was hanging up top. Right. And he'd take the three pieces of straw, he grabbed the collar, jam that in there, take it up to where it belonged, and pack it in there. Pull it out and do it again. Pull it out and do it again. So then when they stuff those, you'll see he's got a, a vice grip, he clips on there, uh -huh. and on that vice grip there's a rope going to the ceiling and there's a weight. So we have different size weights for different size collars to get the right texture in the straw. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the... That is the, the rod that is inside the tube. Wow. So that brings a load of straw, unloads, it goes back and gets another load. Okay. Is he pulling it off the rod? No, he's actually he's putting pressure on yet. Pushing it towards the rod. Yeah. Okay. Now you'll see his hand keeping pressure on the rod and the leather to for restriction to keep that end nice and hard like the other end. See him hold on to the rod there. Yep. Now what he's doing, that straw stuffer there has fine shredded straw. Okay. So he's gonna go in the main cavity of the collar and put a layer in about probably an inch thick of fine shredded straw. That creates a cushioning for the horse on the horse side. So after he's done that, then they take that layer of straw on the, the hammer and they'll compact it and kind of form a cake. So the next step will be going in behind that with a solid layer of long straw. Okay. 
for right. that gives you a foundation on the on the outside and cushioning on the inside for the horse. So the the longer straw is on the outside. Yep. And on the inside is finer straw and it's been compressed. Yep. Um, and it's so that it's smooth and it provides cushion. Right. Yep. And you have to have that long straw on the outside for if you don't have long straw, the wherever the traces are, the you'll get voids. If it's fine straw, it'll it'll work it'll, apart. It'll bend it'll, it'll bend the straw. It'll bend the collar. It'll bend the collar. And yeah. The, and the straight straw prevents that from happening. Exactly. It stays in place. Yeah. And that's one of the the biggest things with our collars here. The um, most people don't use long straw. Okay. Most of them use fine straw. Using fine straw, it's much easier to stuff a collar. Because with a fine straw, you can move the straw inside the collar. Whereas so, this straw, you have to place it where you want it. You place it where it, it wants it. It stays there. So it's much more of a challenge, but it makes a much better collar. Gotcha. And the other thing is, with the long straw, if your horse rubs on the manger or something and gets a, a hole the size of a quarter, right. you still don't lose the straw. Right. Whereas if it's filled fun, with fine straw, it'll pour out. It'll pour out. Yeah, like sawdust. Yep. Is this oat straw? Wheat straw. Wheat straw, mm -hmm. okay. And that's what you exclusively use? Yep. And does that come from around here? You, do, do we have a supplier in Upper Sandusky, which is about an hour and a half from here, that has supplied wheat, with wheat straw for 20 some years. Okay. And that's where he's compressing the fine straw. See how he's watching not to move the, the fine straw? Yeah. He's going on top of it. Yep. That's where he fastened the weight again. Mm -hmm. And with the collar stuffers, there's nowhere in the world you can go to buy collar stuffers. Okay, so you know, I was wondering. Yeah. Yeah. If you want something for the collar industry, it's pretty well. You make it. Yep. Yeah. The sewing machines, you can buy those, but the stuffing equipment, the press, they're just not. Because the industry is so small. So small. Yeah. yeah. And if I went to uh, some other collar shops, would I find the same kind of a thing similar. in some of them? Yeah, similar machinery. That's one side complete there. So this will form the hand groove. So you have a nice open hand groove. And then the, the header comes down and forms the draft. It gets in the overall shape. Okay. Go ahead and take that out and you can show us how it works. That's where it's forming, that's forming the hand groove right there. Those wings go in there and just yep. open that up. Make it a channel. Yep, make it a channel. Just like that. <laughs> that's where we put the non-paying customers to. We put them in the press. Right, right. They do pay their bills. Right? Yeah, yeah, they just have to see it happen once. Right. <laughs> to a mannequin. <laughs> So this here is a 25 inch 410A, so that's a 410 adjustable collar. Okay. That collar is going to adjust from 25, 26, and 27 inch then when it's done. Because of the strap on the top. It has a, a cap on the top. Right. 
expandable cab. Right. Okay. So now each collar is cut off to the exact length. That's what he's doing there. And we try not to waste leather, so we have those as close as possible. Now he's going to clean out the ends. need to be put in to mold the collar to get the final shape. Okay. They will come together, you know, and close in the top. Right, right. And when a customer buys a collar, if the collar is big enough to where they can put it on over the head, they never cut the straps. I see. But if it's a smaller collar or works with a really big head, they'll have to cut the straps. have the straps on the bottom there, Chris, if you would. Those are the three straps. So those are the riveted in. The riveted in. That's the buckle going on the side for the adjustable. The cap? The cap, yep. And it failed. Yep. So what he's doing there, he's just forming those top curves. It's just right. yep. finishing the curve on the top. Then with putting them in the mold, this collar is cut off to the right side. This is the final shaping and the final sizing. Okay. So it'll be shaped and sized to just the right length. for the final stretching. There's a screw in it. Yeah. Okay. but I, I assume that there was some part of this where things had to be wet to form it. Oh, so they are. They are. The collar that he stopped, that okay. collar is wet. These here have been soaked. Otherwise, it, would, it wouldn't hold the shape. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So the, the leather has pores, just like skin, you know, where the hair were. So when you soak it, yeah. the, the water goes in there, opens up the pores and softens the, the leather. Uh-huh. So as that dries out, the moisture goes out and it forms and shapes like that. Okay. And is it is it water that it's in or is it water, water and it's just straight water? Just straight water, yep. Um, the leather, when you get it, it has been um, what's the word? Um, it's had oil pushed into it, hasn't right. it? Right, yep. yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing with the leather. Uh, the the new the synthetic collars uh -huh. they're doing. Okay. Um, the leather collar will form to a horse's neck, you know, but there's, there's shaping properties right. in there. Right. Well, the synthetics right. will never there's fit. There's no memory. There's no memory. The, the They'll never synthetic. fit like a, like a leather collar. So there he's basically just preparing the top for the, uh, the adjustment, the adjustable.
So this here collar, this is a 22 to 24 inch collar. So every time you adjust that out, you gain an inch in length on the collar. But the, the problem with these collars, we sell a bunch of them, but people abuse them. See, every time you raise the top, so we raise this top one inch, mm -hmm. it lowers the Sweeney and the draft one inch. Of course, right. So people buy them, we've had people bring them back, you know, and they had punched extra holes in them. Right. Well, they took a 22 inch collar and made a 26 inch collar out of right. it. Right. Does not feel good for the horse. Right. You know, it doesn't fit. So these collars are ideal on if you're working horses and in the winter time they gain weight. And in the spring you need to adjust them out just a little bit to get them worked down and have them back to the original size once they hit the really heavy work. That's what they're designed for. That's what they're designed for, yeah. As opposed to the philosophy of taking a fixed sized collar and using a pad after you've sweated them down, after you've gotten them back right. hard again yep. after plowing, yep. you got them in shape again. But a lot of people buy these they are thinking, you know, this is a 22, oh, this is a 22, 23, and 24 inch collar. Well, it really isn't. You know, it's, a, it's an adjustable collar, but it should always come back to the original size, to the smallest size, to have the correct contour, contour on the shape and the draft and everything. Gotcha. That's a good point to make. Uh, and well, I'll just repeat it. So the adjustable collar isn't made to fit a variety of horse, horse neck sizes, horse shoulder sizes. It's made for a specific horse, but it's to accommodate the, the increase and the decrease of that horse's flesh. Exactly, exactly. From spring yep. to summer. Yep. Mm -hmm. Winter to summer. Mm -hmm. The collar, I mean, it is an expense. Right. Collar not cheap. Right. But very important to have the right size of the right horse. But if you don't have the right size collar, you know what a shoe feels like if you have a toe rubbing against the front or the right. side or right. it can't work like that. Right. Yeah. And, and, and everything is coming through that collar. The horse is pushing the load with its shoulder on that collar. On the collar. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.